thanks for joining us today. Um, I just said us, and I really meant me uh, coming to you from my house in this quarantine slash maybe kind of sort of post-quarantine world. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about Surface Enterprise Management, or SEMM. Uh, typically, this would be in person or at a demo or a trade show or a breakout session. Um, but those aren't really things that we're doing right now. And so I wanted to try to see if I can capture uh, SEM in the next 10, 15 minutes or so. We'll see how, how well I do at the end of this video holding to that. Um, but just so you can see it from soup to nuts. What, what is SEM? What's it designed for? Um, how do I deploy it? And then how do I test this today? So at the end of this video, you should see exactly how you can test SEM today in your environment, in mean, your Surface device. Um, whether you're working from home or whether you're back in the office. Um, so with that, let's let's get right into it. Um, all right, so pull up your web browser of choice and let's go to aka.ms slash SEMM, Surface Enterprise Management Mode or, or SEM as we like to refer to it. This is effectively the, the homepage of SEM. So it has you know the guidance of what the, what it is, what it isn't, uh, how it works, what you can configure, all those options. Great. I'm not going to read you a docs.microsoft.com page. Let's actually jump in and look at it. Um, so there's two main ways to use SEM. Uh, there's the Surface UV Configurator, which is what we're going to talk about today. And then there's using Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager to manage and deploy configuration and security settings to firmware. Um, the second option leverages PowerShell scripts deployed to create packages deployed via ConfigMan. It's significantly more flexible, uh, gives you the ability to set both the configuration setting and the security setting on that fake configure. So maybe I want to disable cameras, but let users turn them back on or disable boot from USB, but let someone turn it back on if they know what they're doing. Um, that can all be done via Configuration Manager and, and PowerShell. Um, we're not going to talk about it today. Might be a video later on that. Uh, later on about that. And if you're interested in that, let me know, um, comments, email, whatever else it is, and we'll see if we can get something put together um, about uh, Endpoint Configuration Manager. Today, we're gonna focus just on the Eufy Configurator. Um, so here it is, I have it pulled up here right now. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and click Start. All right, so three options, makes sense. Configuration Package. Hopefully that's pretty self-explanatory. This is where you'll configure, uh, you know, camera, microphone, speakers, Bluetooth, um, as well as those additional settings like uh, boot from USB, wake on LAN, things like that. Um, we'll get to that in a second. A reset package and recovery package are kind of two sides of the same coin. They're both going to leave the end device in an unenrolled, unmanaged situation, uh, but they go about it different ways. A reset package is if I have a serial number, I create the reset package using the input of that serial number. It creates a package that will unenroll that specific device. I run that on the machine and good, it's unenrolled from SIM. A recovery request is generated entirely from firmware, so from UFI itself. Maybe I can't get into Windows for one reason or another, but I need to unenroll that device for warranty or some other use case. That's where we go with the recovery request route. It's the, the request is generated from the impacted machine. I then take it back to a, a, a place where I have the UFI configurator. I grab that request, I create the um, reset package, it's signed with a certificate, and it goes back to the impact of the machine to be enrolled. Um, I just had a keyword there, which is certificate. So let's let's jump right into what that means. If I go to create a configuration package, I'm gonna be asked, hey, certificate protection. This is the big difference with Surface Enterprise Management. And that is all the policies, all the settings are backed by a certificate. So once enrolled, that policy is signed by a cert. That's you know that cert is stored uh, and in uh, in firmware. So we know, hey, this is my authority. I trust anything that comes from that is signed by this certificate. Um, so any subsequent policies that only apply to the device must also be signed by that cert. If someone tries to apply a policy that wasn't signed by the cert, it won't apply because the device is owned and managed, and it kind of knows it knows who's in charge. Um, so let's talk about that cert. Uh, you'll notice here we have a short link to uh, cert requirements. Relatively clear. I'm not the PKI expert, um, but if you are someone who uh, operates ADCS, Active Directory cert services in in your environment, uh, here's how you can go through and you know begin to create your own. Uh, cert request using uh, kind of the appropriate SEM values. 
Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm actually going to use this PowerShell script that we have published down here. This is for testing purposes only, to be very clear. This is so you can test in your environment. This is not for enterprise rollout. Please don't use this for your enterprise rollout. Um, I'm sure some of you will, um, but in, in general, we really should follow kind of best practice PKI uh, guidelines. You notice here, here's a guide to deploying the two tier PKI hierarchy. Um, if that's you, go, go figure that out. I'm gonna use the PowerShell script because hey, this is just for testing for this video. I open up the PowerShell ISC, you'll notice that I've actually already copied the certificate here. Um, and I'm only gonna make one change. And that is that I'm gonna change this to be says piler cert.pfx. That way, hey, you know, it's actually mine. Um, all right, it looks re good, ready to go. Um, it's going ahead and, spe and specifying this, the password for the certificate. Um, super secure, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I click run and it looks like it worked okay. Let's see, did it complete? Uh, demo cert. And there it is, Tyler cert of PFX, created 1155. It's 1155. All right, we're good to go. Let's head back over to the UFI configurator. I'm gonna click cert protection. Uh, that was C, SEM, demo cert, Tyler cert of PFX. All right, who here remembers the password? right one two three four five six seven eight super secure um, and I'm actually going to skip password protection uh, this would actually set a password before you get to Eufy it doesn't add any actual security value it's more of a keeping users want of settings where they could see something they're not gonna be able to change anything I'm gonna leave it off um, just because ease of use and it's an easier demo for me to not have to type in a password it's up to you I don't you again it's entirely optional so it's optional in the in the tool Okay, so this is what you'd expect to see, Surface Products, Book, Laptop Pro, Go Studio, and Hub 2S. There's gonna be a separate video on Hub 2S, so we'll come back to that later. Um, today, I'm just gonna focus on Surface Pro 7. So I'm gonna remove everything that's not Pro 7. If I left all Pros, it would be fine. Uh, if I apply a policy that's not designed for Pro 7, it's just gonna ignore it, like the you know, detach mechanism or LTE, There's those aren't available for Pro 7, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, but uh, it would just ignore it. So I'm going to go Pro 7. I'll leave all of my accessories on because uh, I just want to enroll this to show you what it looks like. Leave all the accessories, cameras, radios on. Um, here is where SEM is a little bit more than just disabling cameras, right? I can do things like lock the boot order, um, enable or disable network boot, enable network in UFI. So maybe you have a use case where you need the um, the the uh, Ethernet networking abilities in 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 preboot. Great, here you go. Um, th that option is here. Um, I can also do things like wake on LAN uh, and wake on power, which we're going to cover in the Surface Doc 2 video later. Um, the last thing I do want to call out though is this kiosk override. Um, Surface devices were designed and intended to be highly mobile, right? I can charge it, take off the charger, I have all day battery life, great. It's a laptop, a tablet, whatever else it is. Awesome, I get that. The battery is designed to be charged and discharged to, to, to give you, you know, several years of good battery life. There are some use cases where you're going to leave the service plugged in full time. It's a kiosk, it's a room device, maybe it's in a museum or, or doing some other kind of line of business application where it's going to be plugged in 24 by seven or nearly 24 by seven. In that case, turning on battery limit will help prolong the life of the device, changes just how the device and firmware will charge and discharge the battery. So just uh, for to future proof your device and, and, and to make sure that we're using the right charging algorithm for the right use case, if you're going to put the device in a kiosk scenario, go ahead and enable that uh, battery limit kiosk override. If not, leave it normal and move on. All right, final decision we have to make is, do we want to deploy this as an MSI or as a WinPE image? Um, WinPE, it's great, creates a bootable thumb drive. I can plug it into any Surface device, boot from USB, and enroll the device. Um, I'm not gonna do that because it's a little bit harder for me to video. So I'm gonna do the MSI, uh, which will create an installer file, which I can run on my Surface Pro 7, which will enroll the device and SIM. So uh, let's actually, that was me trying to run through it. Let's delete that guy and create a new Surface Pro 7, everything on. Let's save it. Check, check, check. All right, great. Last thing um, is you've created a new Surface you configuration package. Um, you need to remember E6. Okay, E6 is the last two digits of the thumbprint of this Tyler cert.pfx. 
Um, the reason why you need to know that is when I enroll, to show you the screen over here, when I enroll device in management, when it reboots, I'm gonna see this red screen. Now I know this looks angry, but, but it's there on purpose. It's, it's basically saying, hey, did you intentionally enroll the device in SEM? Uh, and to prove that, you have to enter in the last two digits of the cert. This is only on the first enrollment, the first reboot of the first enrollment. Any additional policies or changes do not require this. This is basically saying, hey, admin, hey, user, was this intentional? Um, whether you accidentally pushed a test policy to the wrong machine or something happened to where SIM went to the wrong device, this kind of protects us against that. Uh, the easiest way to think about doing this is we should enroll every single SEM device at deployment so that the deployment technician who's network booting and getting these things going, he'll see this red screen pop up as the final step of deployment. He enters in the two digits and he moves on. Um, that's the best way to do it and you never have to worry about having to do it out in the field. Um, but just know that I gotta remember E6. Um, that cert is that th those two digits will never change. It will be E6 for every single machine that I run this policy on. Um, all right, with that, I am going to copy this MSI over to a thumb drive and go roll on to my Surface Pro 7. All right, so I have copied that MSI over to a flash drive. Um, I also created another MSI called Camera Off, which is the exact same settings, just where the camera's turned off. So first we'll do the SP7 all on to show, hey, it enrolled, here's what the signature check looks like, all those fun things. And then we'll come back and turn the cameras off and prove that that actually works. So let's go ahead and switch over to my Pro 7 and we will run SP7 all on MSI. And oh, it hung up and that's a good thing. I should not just be able to double click this and apply it. There are protections and some security checks on this to make sure that I'm an admin, it's being run as admin, it's not being run remotely, number of checks, you know, it can't run as system, it has to run as an administrator. Um, so let's actually go ahead and open up uh, admin command prompt. We'll change to the correct directory and we will go through and we get SP7 is in there and let's run that. Installing this could trigger BitLock recovery, understood. We'll click OK. Click next. And at this point, it's going through and um, making sure that it is a Pro 7, it's applying the right, uh, you know, everything checks out, permissions wise, signature wise, it's a Pro 7 with the right values. And then it prepares that information in a capsule uh, so that firmware can take action on it. Windows can't actually manipulate firmware. It's a handoff between the two and it's done in a you know, secure, forensically sound way. And so the Windows component is now done. We're gonna reboot this machine and do the next phase in firmware. So now we are going to reboot the machine, in which case I will lose video and I will switch over to my camera. Um, awesome, there we go, I get the, the red screen here. Um, who here remembers what the two digits were? It was uh, E6, I checked before doing this just to make sure, E6. And then I'll click okay. And that should enroll the device. So it's gonna reboot again, because again, we just set the variables now have to reboot to apply them, because uh, again, you can't apply at runtime. And, you know, the, that profile, those, those configuration settings were, were staged, now it's reboot and they've taken effect. Um, we're gonna reboot all the way into Windows. Uh, and, and, and you won't notice anything inside of Windows, uh, so we're gonna quickly reboot again. And I'm gonna show you a quick trick into how to get um, into Eufy quickly. So uh, let's uh, switch back to here and I will show you, we'll go to start. Uh, sorry, let's actually go to settings, uh, update and security. We'll go to recovery and then advanced startup. So there's a number of ways for you to kind of boot the screen. That's the one that works every time. I'm gonna click troubleshoot, advanced options, and then UV firmware settings, and then reboot. Again, I'm gonna lose the, the video out here. So I'm gonna switch back to this camera feed. Um, we're, we see our, our Foursquare logo here, and I should see the white page of UV. There we go. All right. Now, hopefully you've seen this before. If not, this is Eufy front page. And I now have a new tab in here called Management. You'll notice 
hey look, Surface Demo Kit. Uh, there's our certificate with the thumbprint ending in E6. If I come up here to Devices, notice that they're all on and they're grayed out. I can't toggle them on and off. It's because they're all managed. Again, as I said, whatever I turn on or off is exactly what gets applied. So we are good to go there. Everything happened the way it should. Let's restart this machine. Um, we will switch, let's switch back online. We'll switch back to the uh, video out. Once this turns on, again, just so you can see, it's, it's booting up. Um, again, everything's turned on, so everything should still work. Cameras work, all, all, everything you'd expect to work is, is, nothing's changed, right? But it's now owned. You know, a user can't go in and change it. No one else can go in and change this or manipulate it or anything like that. It's, again, the device is managed. Um, if I were, wanted to do something a little different, let's come through and open up command prompt again. Run as admin. Yes. We will change to D and do camera off. Again, this could trigger a bit like recovery. Got it. Okay. Hold on. Before we do this, let's actually just to show you, to make sure uh, camera is working. Good. Cameras are working. Awesome. Let's close that camera. And next, I accept install. All right, so this, again, I've already enrolled the device. I've already entered that thumbprint, so I won't need to do it again. We should just see the device reboot. Yes. This is the fun waiting game of watching policies apply, but hopefully you get the picture. I like to just prove to you, hey, this is actually working. I can show you it working. Let's try to turn on the Windows Hello cameras. Uh, Front-facing camera and the IR camera have both been disabled. Um, so you see the eye, it's trying, it's looking, it's looking, let's say getting ready. And then we should see, can't turn cameras on. Couldn't turn camera on. Awesome. Okay. So now let's go ahead and enter in pin number. And just to show you what I show you that this is working, open up the camera app and no cameras found. We open up device manager. Um, awesome, no cameras there. And then finally, let's show you another trick. Hold down the shift key, power and restart. And that boosts that same kind of advanced option screen, troubleshoot, advanced options, UFI firmware settings, restart. And we'll go here just to show you real quick what this looks like. Uh, devices, and there you see it. Um, everything's turned on except for those cameras. So there we have it. We had all on, cameras off, um, just via policy change. Um, again, all these items can be configured if you have a new policy. Um, and with that, let's head to the wrap up. Hey, thanks for watching today. I hope you found this interesting. If uh, you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll see if I can come back and, and, and update them. If there's anything I left out or, again, things that might need to be addressed, I'll try to work that into a future video. Um, and there are a few more videos coming. I want to, you know, things like Doc 2, uh, a few comments on Surface Book 3, and Surface Hell, which I had mentioned earlier. So hit the subscribe button. You'll get a notification when those videos come out. And I'll catch you next time.